in this lecture we'll discuss about the fourier analysis and uh, some performance parameters of semi converter so this is a waveform for the uh, supply current is for the semi converter so here during positive half cycle that is from alpha to pi the magnitude of is is i naught and during negative half cycle from pi plus alpha to 2 pi the magnitude of is will be equal to minus i naught so the general expression for the Fourier series is given by is is equal to a naught plus summation of n is equal to 1 2 3 and so on up to infinity cn sin n omega t plus phi n where cn is equal to under root of a n square plus b n square and similarly phi n is given by tan inverse of a n by b n okay so here a naught is the average value both the uh, positive and negative half cycles are symmetrical to each other so the uh, average value will be equal to 0 and uh, an is equal to uh, this is a general formula for finding out an so an is given by 2 by 2 by integral f of t cos n omega naught t d omega naught t and similarly bn is given by 2 by 2 by integral f of t sin n omega naught t d omega naught t so we will derive an and bn one by one now we will derive an value an is given by 2 by 2 pi integral alpha 2 pi i naught cos n omega t d omega t minus integral pi plus alpha to 2 pi i naught i naught cos n omega t d omega t so integration of cos n omega t will be equal to sin n omega t divided by n so integrating uh, these two terms we will get i naught by pi into sin n omega t divided by n over the limits alpha to pi minus sin n omega t divided by n over the limits pi plus alpha to 2 pi so now substituting the limits we will get i naught by n pi into sin n pi minus sin n alpha so for the first term minus second term sin 2 n pi minus sin n of pi plus alpha so now uh, we all know that sin n pi will be equal to 0 sin n pi as well as sin 2 n pi for all the values of n will be equal to 0 and sin a plus b is equal to sin a cos b plus cos a sin b so applying these two formula in this uh, equation we will get i naught by n pi into minus sin n alpha plus sin n pi cos n alpha plus cos n pi sin n alpha so because here sin n pi term sin 2 n pi term will become 0 and we are applying sin a plus b formula for this sin n pi plus n alpha okay so now uh, again this sin n pi will become 0 so we can write i naught by n pi into minus sin n alpha plus cos n pi into sin n alpha so now cos n pi is equal to 1 for n is equal to 2 4 6 etc and similarly cos n pi will be equal to minus 1 for n is equal to 1 3 5 etc so if we consider odd value of n we can write an is equal to i naught by n pi into minus sin n alpha minus sin n alpha because here cos n pi will be equal to minus 1 for odd values so if we consider even values then uh, this will be equal to plus 1 so minus sin n alpha plus sin n alpha will become 0 so for odd values uh, will obtain an for even values an will be equal to 0 so on further uh, simplification an will be equal to minus 2 i naught divided by n pi into sin n alpha so next we will derive bn value so bn again uh, the same formula uh, replacing cos by sin okay so bn can be written as 2 by 2 pi integral alpha 2 pi i naught sin n omega t d omega t minus integral pi plus alpha to 2 pi i naught sin n omega t d omega t okay on uh, integrating this sin n omega t we will get minus cos n omega t divided by n similarly the here if we integrate the second term we will get minus cos already we have minus outside so minus and minus will become plus so plus cos n omega t by n over the limits pi plus alpha to 2 pi so now substituting the uh, limits here in the first term we will get minus cos n pi plus cos n alpha plus substituting the limit uh, in the second term we will get cos n 2 pi minus cos n pi plus alpha okay so now 
we can apply cos a plus b formula for this term okay so on uh, applying this formula we can write cos n pi cos n alpha plus sin n pi sin n alpha okay, remaining things are same uh, as we all know that sin n pi is 0 okay this term will get cancelled so on simplification we get i naught by n pi minus cos n pi plus cos n alpha plus cos 2 n pi minus cos n pi cos n alpha so if n is uh, odd that is 1 3 5 then cos n pi can be written as minus 1 and cos 2 n pi can be written as plus 1 similarly if n is an even number 2 4 6 etc then cos n pi will be equal to plus 1 and cos 2 n pi will be equal to plus 1 so applying this uh, to be an equation for uh, even values of n bl will become 0 because here minus 1 plus cos n alpha plus 1 and minus cos n alpha so this will be 0 so only for uh, odd values of n we will get the bn value so bn will be equal to i naught by n pi so here uh, this is plus this will be this term will become plus 1 okay so 1 plus cos n alpha plus 1 plus cos n alpha so it will be equal to 2 i naught by n pi into 1 plus cos n alpha so this is uh, for odd values of n so for uh, odd values of n we are obtaining both a n and b n so now we will derive c n value so c n is equal to under root of a n square plus b n square so now for substituting a n and b n we can write under root of minus 2 i naught by n pi sin n alpha whole square plus 2 i naught by n pi 1 plus cos n alpha uh, whole square okay. so squaring these two terms we will get 4 i naught square divided by n square pi square into sin square n alpha plus 4 i naught square n square pi square into 1 plus cos n alpha whole square under root okay power 1 by 2 so taking this 4 uh, i naught square n square pi square outside so we can write uh, 4 i naught square divided by n square pi square into sin square n alpha plus so this is in the form a plus b whole square so we can write 1 plus cos square n alpha plus 2 cos n alpha under root okay. so taking this term outside the root we can write 2 i naught by n pi and uh, this sin square n alpha plus cos square n alpha can be written as 1 so already we have 1 here so 1 plus 1 will be equal to 2 so 2 plus 2 cos n alpha under root okay so now uh, we can take this 2 outside the root so this can be written as 2 root 2 i naught by n pi into 1 plus cos n alpha under root okay so 1 plus cos n alpha can be written as 2 cos square n alpha by 2 so on substituting this uh, formula here we can write 2 root 2 i naught by n pi into 2 cos square n alpha by 2 under root okay. on further simplification we can write 4 i naught by n pi into cos n alpha by 2 so this is the value of cn so next we will find out the value of phi n so phi n is given by tan inverse of a n by b n so that is equal to tan inverse of minus 2 i naught by n pi sin n alpha divided by 2 i naught by n pi into 1 plus cos n alpha so this uh, this term will get cancelled and uh, again the sin n alpha can be written as uh, 2 sin n alpha by 2 into cos n alpha by 2 already we have minus here and similarly 1 plus cos n alpha can be written as 2 cos square n alpha the simplification we can write this term as minus tan inverse of tan of n alpha by 2 so this will give you minus n alpha by 2 so this is the value of phi n so now we can write the Fourier expression for i of s uh, that is i s of t so i s of t is equal to summation of n is equal to 1 3 5 and so on up to infinity because a n and b n will exist only for odd values of n and this is a cn value okay the general formula is a summation of cn into sin n omega t minus phi n okay so the cn already we have derived 4 i naught by n pi into cos n alpha by 2 into sin n omega t minus n alpha by 2 okay this is the required fourier series for the supply current waveform okay. 
So now we'll derive the performance parameter. So first one is the input displacement factor. So input displacement factor is given by cos of minus alpha by 2. Okay, this uh, phi n value. So uh, cos of minus alpha by 2 is nothing but cos alpha by 2. So this is input displacement factor. So next one, distortion factor. So distortion factor is given by the ratio of IS1 RMS divided by IS RMS. So IS1 RMS is the RMS value of the fundamental component. And this is the RMS value of the uh, supply current. Okay. So already we have derived this IS of T. This is a Fourier uh, expression. So from this expression we have to write the IS1 RMS value. So this is the this is the maximum value of the uh, current for i naught by n pi into cos n alpha by 2. So is1 rms can be written as 4 i naught divided by root 2. So because maximum value divided by root 2 will give you the rms value and for finding out this fundamental component we have to substitute n is equal to 1. So here n is equal to uh, 1 in both the terms here uh, in the denominator n will become 1 and here also this term will become cos alpha by so on further simplification we will get i naught into 2 root 2 by pi into cos alpha by 2. So this is is1 rms. So next is rms is obtained by uh, obtained from this waveform. Okay. So is rms can be written as i naught. Since i naught is the magnitude of this uh, is waveform. So this can be written as i naught into under root of pi minus alpha by pi so pi minus alpha is the conduction period during positive half cycle so this conduction period remains the same for both positive and negative half cycle okay this is pi minus alpha so pi minus alpha by pi under root into i naught can be written as is rms value okay now substituting these two that is is1 rms and is rms in g equation we'll get 2 root 2 cos alpha by 2 and divided by under root pi into pi minus alpha so this is the distortion factor g so next input power factor so input power factor is given by g into fundamental displacement factor okay so already we have derived these two terms so multiplying the these two we will get 2 root 2 cos square alpha by 2 divided by under root pi into pi minus alpha so uh, further we can simplify this term already we know 2 cos square alpha by 2 can be written as 1 plus cos alpha so this term uh, input power factor can be further simplified as root 2 into 1 plus cos alpha divided by under root of pi into pi minus alpha next input harmonic factor so uh, the formula is under root of is rms square minus is1 rms square uh, whole divided by is1 rms okay so already we have derived all these terms okay so uh, this uh, this can be simplified as is rms square divided by is1 rms square minus 1 under root so this term can be written as 1 by uh, distortion factor square minus 1 okay so substituting all the values and simplifying we'll get under root pi into pi minus alpha divided by 8 cos square alpha by 2 minus 1 okay this is the input harmonic factor or simply harmonic factor so next we will derive active power so active power is given by uh, vs rms is1 rms into cos alpha by 2 so already we have derived uh, is1 rms fundamental component of the supply current so vs rms into 2 root 2 i naught by pi cos alpha by 2 so this is is1 rms into cos alpha by 2 so on further simplification we can write 2 root 2 vs rms i naught by pi into cos square alpha by 2 so next reactive power so reactive power is given by vs rms into is1 rms into sin alpha by 2 so again substituting for is1 rms we can write vs rms into 2 root 2 i naught by pi into cos alpha by 2 into sin alpha by 2 so now uh, we can write 2 into sin alpha by 2 into cos alpha by 2 as sin alpha 
so on simplification we'll get uh, root 2 vs rms i naught by pi into sin alpha so next we'll see the comparison of fully controlled converter and half controlled converter so half controlled converter is nothing but the semi converter so here in the case of the half controlled converter the thyristors are replaced by diodes okay so when compared with the full converter this half controlled converters are lesser in cost uh, cost is uh, lesser because all the uh, thyristors all the two thyristors are replaced by two diodes here and uh, during the negative swing okay the period of the negative uh, voltage swing on the dc terminals obtained with the fully controlled bridge circuits are replaced by the freewheeling periods of zero voltage in the half controlled converter so that is the negative swing is uh, completely eliminated in the case of a half controlled converter so this is advantageous because this results in the reduction of the ripple voltage with correspondingly reduced filtering requirements so, so the filtering requirements are uh, lesser in the case of a semi converter uh, similarly in the case of a half bridge uh, circuit that is semi converter the average dc voltage can be continuously controlled from maximum to virtually zero with an increased control range of uh, firing angle alpha and um, moreover due to the freewheeling action the power factor is improved in the case of a half controlled converter so these are some of the advantages of half controlled converters when compared with the fully controlled converter so the disadvantage is that uh, the supply current is more distorted in the case of a half controlled converter when compared with the fully controlled converter this is a uh, disadvantage in the case of a semi converter so now these uh, half controlled converters are widely used in mainline ac traction where large dc motors are supplied from a single phase ac supply